Hey guys, welcome to the webinar. Um, there's a little chat box below if you could uh, sign in there and uh, tell me where you're from. We'll get started here. Uh, I got 849 by my clock. We'll get started promptly at 9. So hang out for a few minutes. Looks like we got people going in and out. So, uh, if, um, like I said, when you when you join, uh, get in the chat there below. Uh, tell me where you're from. Hey there, Haley from Indiana. That's where I'm from. I'm from Indianapolis. Mackenzie from Florida. How's it going? We will get started promptly at nine o'clock. I have 8.53 by my uh, clock, so about seven minutes we will get the presentation started.
Very cool. Haley from Bloomington. That's beautiful down there. Uh, me and my wife usually uh, in the, in the um, fall, we go down to the IU football games and stuff. I'm a former football player. So uh, we like going down there and tailgating and stuff. So that's a pretty cool little place. Uh, McKenzie, it's got done walking the dogs. Yep, very expansive knowledge. Great. I hope to give you guys some good information about some shits in this so. one. Um, new folks, if you could uh, put where you're from down in the uh, little chat box down below the video here, and uh, uh, just so I can see that uh, everything's working, please. Two minutes to uh... One minute till we get started. Laura Briggs from Alberta, Canada. That's 
beautiful area. I've, I've been up there once or twice and it's a beautiful country as long as it's uh, not winter. All right, well, I got nine o'clock, so we will get started here. Um, I wanted to thank you guys first for uh, uh, deciding to um, do the presentation here. I uh, really appreciate you taking your time out. I hope to, uh, you get some good information. Um, this is mainly um, uh, kind of a, uh, for a person who's just getting into Schutzen. So if uh, you're a little more advanced than that, um, Stay tuned here. Uh, we'll have a Q&A session at the end where I'll, I'll ask, I'll answer anything, um, anything that uh, needs to occur. So, uh, so keep that in mind. Uh, I got a quick little presentation just so uh, people who are brand new to the sport, I can show them the basics. And uh, after that, we'll get into the Q&A. So uh, I'm going to switch over here uh, to my desktop. I got a little presentation. Uh, you'll still be able to hear my voice and everything. You just won't be able to see my beautiful face. So here we go. Okay. So this is the Schutzen 101 webinar, uh, highandtrial.com. I am the creator of highandtrial.com. And here you can see me, my big sexy self here, uh, working my current dog, um, Olek. I call him Kane, um, black German Shepherd. So kind of the agenda for the presentation here. Uh, I'm going to go over uh, first my story uh, so you can know who I am, you know who this joker is here that's uh, uh, giving you information. Um, I'm going to go over uh, some of the basics of the sport, um, just the different, uh, just go over tracking, obedience, and protection, kind of uh, what that what that stuff is and, and how it pertains to our sport, uh, where and how to get started, uh, going over the different organizations, and uh, also clubs and finding good clubs, stuff like that. Uh, we will have a, a, a section on how I can help you achieve your goals. And at the end, we'll have a live Q&A. So um, I got one email, somebody having trouble um, uh, signing into the chat role. Uh, I apologize for that, but uh, any questions will have to be submitted through there. Um, um, I suppose you could probably email me as well, uh, and, and we can do it that way. If you can't get into the chat role, email me. My email is highintrial14 at gmail.com. And uh, throughout the presentation here, uh, just start typing in um, your questions in the chat role, uh, even, even though we're not on the Q&A portion. And then when we get to the Q&A, I will just uh, uh, go in order from there, and, 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 we'll, and we'll go. Um, I, I guesstimate this will last about an hour, but it can be as short or as long as we want to make it. So. Um, I, I intend on answering all questions, so uh, we will get going. So, a little about myself, my story. Uh, I'm currently 30 years old. I'm a uh, father of one. I just had a beautiful baby girl who is uh, three months old. Uh, I, comp I played competitive sports my entire life. Uh, over on the right, you can see um, I was – First team All American in uh, uh, in college in AI, NAIA. I was a center, uh, state runner up in high school wrestling. I've just been very competitive my whole life. Um, and once college was over, I wasn't I wasn't good enough to go on and play professionally. So I didn't really have an outlet for uh, kind of my competitive side. And, and that's kind of where the dog training came in. So I found Schutzen about eight years ago. Uh, my first dog there on the left, Reagan. That's my baby girl. She's uh, she was a backyard bred boxer. Uh, absolutely zero drive for the sport. Um, I I took her in. I started uh, training, uh, just doing my AKC obedience stuff. 
And I saw a Belgian Malinois was, just happened to be in the club with me. And I, I thought it was a German Shepherd cross, never heard of a Malinois before. Um, but I inquired because I, I thought the dog was cool. The dog was had all the, knew all the tricks and all this stuff. So I asked about the dog and I kind of did some Google searches and I found Shilton that way and, and got started. Uh, so I got started with the boxer. Um, with her, I was able to uh, get my BH on her. Um, and uh, she's currently a couch potato. Uh, but uh, she taught me a lot about the sport. I learned all the basics with her. I, I trained her for about a year, and, and I, I knew that there was no – after a little while, I knew that BH was going to be as high as she can go, which was, which was fine. I, um, but uh, I, I knew that I'd have to – if I wanted to continue in the sport, I'd have to get a different dog. So that's when I got my second dog there, Blitzkrieg von Kowitz. I called him Blitz. Um, I got him at eight weeks old, did all the puppy training. Uh, very, very high drive dog. Uh, very high ball drive, high prey drive, high aggression. He was pretty extreme in, in, in everything. Um, I was able to get my uh, Schutzen 3 or IPO 3 on him. Um, and I did a couple national competitions with him. Um, unfortunately, at three years old, he died. I, I, I went to get him um, out of his kennel one morning, and, and, and he was just dead. So unfortunate, unfortunate thing there, um, but he really, really taught me a lot. With, with the first dog, I learned how to deal with dogs with very low drive, and with him, I learned how to deal with dogs with very high drive, and it's, it's two different animals and, and um, with a very different skill set for each. Um, my current dog... Uh, Oleg von Einzi, uh, call him Kane, uh, Germ Black German Shepherd. I got him at 10 weeks as well, raised him from a puppy. Um, and he's kind of a in-between dog. He, he's on the higher side in drive, but um, he's definitely not as high drive as the Malawal. Um, I, I've got my IPO one or Schutzen one on him, and uh, he's currently in training, hoping to uh, take him up to the national levels and stuff uh, next year. So. That's kind of uh, my resume here on, on on the dogs I've owned and and kind of I've I've owned a di uh, various amount of breeds, uh, various uh, uh, drive levels, various temperaments. Uh, so uh, I, I've got a I've got a nice rounded base in the dogs I've worked with thus far. So I guess first for the people who are brand new, what is Schutzen? Uh, Schutzen. Uh, otherwise known as IPO. It was originally a uh, breeding test for German Shepherds. So uh, anytime a, a German Shepherd um, wanted to breed over in Germany, they, they'd have to have, they'd have to get at least the Sch uh, Schutzen one. Uh, and that would allow the dog to, uh, to breed. That just, it, it's just kind of a baseline test of uh, saying, does the dog have the temperament to carry on German Shepherd uh, characteristics. Um, it's still used as a breeding test by some, and it's um, also a, a dog sport considered by many. Um, that's right now. It's kind of hybrid. It, there's still some breeding test stuff in there, but it's also just the dog sport as well. Um, the 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 actual test of Schutzen um, is uh, tracking, obedience, and protection, and we will get and dig a little bit deeper into each of those. So, shifts and tracking. Um, people who come from the uh, search and rescue world, it's a little bit different than, than that sort of tracking. Um, we do what's called footstep to footstep tracking. So, um, as you can see over here, uh, we want the dog to have a deep nose and the dog is supposed to kind of follow the footprints. Uh, and, and by deep nose, we mean the dog's nose should be down in the ground following the footprints. And they will also have to indicate uh, an article, which is um, a piece of uh, man-made material uh, that, that uh, is dropped by the track layer uh, for the dog to find. Um, and as you can see here, these are the different trial levels. So um, an IPO one track is aged by 20 minutes. So that means the track layer lays the track and the dog doesn't run it until 20 minutes later. 
Um, there's 300 paces of the track, and there are two articles. And, and that and the IPO one is the first level, and as you go down through the titles, it gets harder and harder. So down here, if you want to do your FH2, uh, the track's going to be aged by three hours, 1,800 paces, seven articles, and then there's some also some other um, cross tracks and, and other various stuff that goes along um, in the tracking. So um, a lot of different stuff you can do in the tracking. Um, and, and with Schutzen, you can choose to do uh, just pieces of Schutzen. If if the protection doesn't uh, doesn't catch your fancy, then just do tracking. If um, or in obedience, you know. Um, so we will go on, and we'll sh I'll show you here a little bit about what the tracking looks like. So this is this is a young this is my young dog. This was taken about a year ago. Um, when I was still doing some foundation training on him. And as you can see, so this is what I mean by deep nose. You see how his nose is real down deep in there, and he's right on the track. Um, in uh, search and rescue, stuff like that, the nose is kind of, can kind of be kind of up. They can be to the left or the right of the actual track. It doesn't matter. But on here, they have to stay right on the track and, um, and with a deep nose. And, and as you can tell here, he's stopping and eating food. Um, during a trial, there's no food or anything. This is just training. Uh, but uh, you can get a, a good little uh, peek at what it looks like here. And I can show you a little farther down the road here. He'll, we'll come up to an article. But yeah, this is kind of and, – and this is a pretty typical way that – um, we start teaching tracking, just food in the footprints. Dog learns that, hey, the, the, the smell of crushed vegetation or dirt or whatever you're working with is the uh, – it, um, there could be a treat there. So that that's kind of a pretty universal foundation for a lot of folks. I know it, you get in trouble when you say universal because everybody has their own way, but um, but it's, it's a pretty typical foundation for a dog. So – Pretty soon here, he'll come up to an article, I promise. The article is right here. Right there, sorry, right, right there. The dog downs, shows you the article, and I trained it so they, that he looks at it, but again, that's just that's just training stuff. So that's kind of what Schutzen tracking looks like. Um, uh, there's all sorts of in intricacies on um, how to get better tracking, what the tracking, uh, how fast, how how to how to make them slower, all kinds of stuff. So, but that's just kind of a little um, introduction onto what um, shoots and tracking looks like. So, we will go on to obedience. Um, so, in the obedience. Uh, I, I describe Schutz and Obedience as focused, spirited protection. The dog should be in a happy frame of mind, um, should be um, obedient, but at the same time, intense. Um, some of the behaviors, uh, focused healing with gunshots, uh, changes of speed, um, sit down, stand, recalls, front finishes, retrieves, uh, send away with a down, a long down with distraction. So I'll show you. Um, this is this is my dog and I at at a uh, national championship event. I will show you kind of a little bit of a little bit of the routine. This is kind of what Schutz and Obedience looks like. Uh, this is the dog is very attentive, tails up and wagging, nice and happy. Um, you hear the gunshots there. Yeah, we got some healing in here. Here we'll show you. We heal through a group. So there's a group of people. Healing through the group. So at the same time, I heal through the group, but they still must be very attentive to you. 
top. Here we go, kind of show you. Uh, we also do um, positions out of motion. So here's a sit in motion. So you tell the dog sit, you walk away, the dog stays in the position. Same thing, that one is a down out of, out of running. So I was running, tell the dog down. And these are all at the IPO3 level. Stand, same thing. Then here we go into the retrieves. There are three different sizes of dumbbells depending on what level you're on. There's really, and there's a whole routine to all this. So, so every Schutten three trial routine is the same. So you see the dog goes out fast, comes back fast, presents the dumbbell. Call the dog to heel. So throughout this entire routine, the dog needs to be fast, happy, and attentive. And, that, and that's kind of what we're always in. In the end here, here's a send away. I send the dog out. He downs. So without going through the entire uh, routine there, that's kind of what the shits and obedience looks like. So you can get kind of an idea of um, what we're looking for. It's, it's very uh, um, detail-driven. It's very detail-driven in that um, the, the – the scoring and judging is done by points. You get point, you get judged out of a hundred points and for every little tic tac thing, you get points taken off. Um, so in that particular trial, I scored a 94, which was like second or third highest in the trial. So that was obedient. And now the one that, um, it kind of shoots and is known for is the protection. Uh, the protection is to, um, Test the dog's courage, essentially. Uh, uh, in the protection, we're looking for a strong, dominant, aggressive um, dog that, uh, that that's very courageous. Um, some of the behaviors of blind search, hold and bark, escape bite, side transport, rear transport, and the courage test, um, also known as a long bite. I will kind of show you what that looks like. This is from that same trial that I did the obedience. So they start off here with a uh, blind search. The dog has to search six blinds. Um, the helper is always in the sixth blind, but the dog has to be obedient to take the command from the handler to go to the six blinds. So, so the helper is in blind six here. He is supposed to bark and hold the hold the helper in the in the blind. He is not to bite or or touch the helper. My dog uh, does touch here with the with the bottom of his chin, which is faulty. But the dog is supposed to bark and hold. So the judge tells you to get the dog to, to bring the dog out. So the dog has to come into heel position to be obedient. So this is setting up for an escape bite. I'm, I'm putting the dog down, and the the, hand, the helper will run away, and the dog is to apprehend him. There, the dog takes the bite. It's trying to stop the helper. Has to release the bite at the command and rebites when it's threatened. The helper does do stick hits to test the courage of the dog. It's a padded stick. And again, commanded to release, the dog must out and then go back into guarding.
This is what is called the rear transport. We'll transport behind the helper about five paces. Uh, the helper will turn around and attack, and at that point, the dog must um, apprehend the helper. And again, same thing. On the command, the dog must out and go back into garden. I disarm the helper and go into a side transport where we transport put him on the side. And here he will not get any bites. Heal away. And this is the courage test. It's a long bite. Got a helper coming in that will start yelling and threatening the dog. And I send the dog for a bite. Apprehend. Yeah, he and again, same. And that is pretty much uh, the protection routine. Um, I kind of want to show you guys that whole thing just because uh, that's kind of what Schultz known for and new people in the sport. So that is the protection. Uh, so we will go on to the next phase. So myths about the sport. Um, Schutzen will make my dog aggressive. I've heard this one a ton. Um, I, I, this is what I compare. We're, are we teaching a dog to bite? Yes. Um, but uh, on the same hand, I, I consider it uh, like teaching a kid martial arts. Um, it, we're teaching a kid or the dog to bite, but at the same time, we're teaching him all the discipline that goes along with it, all the obedience, everything. So just because you're going to teach a kid martial arts doesn't mean he's going to go out and pick fights. Um, now, that being said, and it's the same thing with dog. If, if I teach dog to bite, doesn't mean he's going to be some loose cannon that's going to go out and bite everything. It's He's going to have the discipline that's coming with um, the massive amount of training that comes along with Schutzen. Um, that being said, not all temperaments of dogs should be trained for Schutzen. To be completely honest, if, if your dog's fearful and uh, – just kind of a loose cannon in general and doesn't have a real stable temperament, it's probably not great to, to get the dog started in shits. And so just, um, but, but it's not going to make uh, your, your normal lovey dovey dog. It's not going to make them some aggressive Cujo. It, it's just not, it doesn't work like that. Uh, the next myth shoots and training methods are barbaric. Uh, th this one might've been true in the eighties or something. I, I don't know. I I've heard, I've heard this from people who, um, got got involved in Schutzen saying they thought that it was a lot more barbaric. In my mind, Schutzen trainers nowadays are some of the most progressive um, with with marker training and and clicker and and, and free shaping and it, it, there is so little um, of that barbaric training. I, I haven't seen barbaric training. H have I seen uh, prong collars, e collars? Yes. Do I use prong collars, e collars? Yes. But um, we don't use them uh, in a barbaric way, uh, and by any means. And uh, Schutz is way too hard. I could never do it. Uh, a lot of people are uh, kind of overwhelmed when they uh, first get into Schutzen with uh, how difficult it looks. Uh, I, if I can do it, folks, you guys can do it. I, I, I had no dog training background before. Um, this was, I came into it brand new within three years. I had a dog that I was competing with and titling and I mean, even within the first year I was getting my BH, but I mean, I, within three, I was competing on the national level and stuff like that. So it's, um, does it seem hard? Yes, but I promise you, you can do it. Okay. So, uh, how to find a club. And, um, I apologize for, I, I saw we had one person here from Canada. This is mostly directed uh, at people in the U.S. here. Um, so there's basically two routes you can go to find clubs. Uh, if you don't care what uh, club affiliation is, as far as like your breed club or anything like that, you can go on my website, highintrial.com, uh, go to resources uh, tab and go to Schutzen Clubs. On there, I've got a, uh, a 
a list that's got a ton of clubs that uh, have um, all kinds of stuff. If if it's a Schutzen USA club, which is uh, the German Shepherd um, organization, it doesn't matter. You can any breed can join a club. Um, so get on there. You can find clubs out. Um, if you want to specifically join a club from your breed club, um, here's a couple of the uh, most popular breed clubs in the in their websites. So uh, German Shepherd. Um, the United Shetland Club of America, uh, GermanShepherdDog.com. There's an all breed club uh, called DVG. Um, they're at DVGAmerica.com. Uh, Malinois is American Working Malinois Association, Rottweiler, and Doberman. So uh, you can use those websites there. I'll give you a second to jot those down. And if you have a breed that's not within um, any of these, if you go to awdf.net, they have a list of all the different breed clubs that are associated. Um, the AWDF is the American Working Dog Federation, and I'll, I'll show you in a minute. But it's kind of like the it's kind of the parent organization to all these. So, so here's kind of a, a, a this is a very simplified um, kind of organizational hierarchy uh, for United States clubs. So at the very top, you have the FCI. They are the worldwide kind of breed registry. Um, the AWDF reports to the uh, FCI. So the AWDF is the umbrella organization for all of our breed and sports clubs. So uh, like I told you earlier, um, on, on the AWDF consists of United Shetland Club of America, the Boxer Association, Rising Schnauzer Association, Working Working Malinois, Bulldogs, Dobermans, Rottweilers, Dutch Shepherds. I mean, all kinds of stuff. But uh, so this is kind of just the hierarchy of how this works. Um, and like I said, it's simplified because e within each of the breed clubs, they're going to also have a parent or uh, international parent organization overseas so like for instance usca reports to the wusv which also reports to fci so it, it's a big convoluted mess but this kind of gets you what you need to know so once you find a club how do you know whether it's a good club uh the, one of the um one of the ways, these are like four questions I do that it can kind of tell you the quality of a club. Um, number one is, are members of that club titling dogs past the BH? Um, the reason past the BH, because the BH is hard to pass, but past the BH, um, uh, sorry, I, I should explain what BH is. BH is kind of like the um, beginning temperament and obedience testing that the dogs must pass to go on to other titles. So, uh, so they have to do their BH, and then they can get into the IPO one, Schutzen one uh, type of titles. Uh, but the BH doesn't consist of any protection or any uh, tracking. So it's important to see um, if it's a well-rounded club if people are getting those Schutzen titles, uh, because that'll prove whether they're uh, getting in some good uh, protection training and tracking training. Um, does your training style fit in with current members? Uh, every club is different. Um, kind of usually, um, kind of the club is kind of dictated from uh, from the top. So usually a training director will have kind of a, a system that the rest of the members um, are usually pretty close to. Sometimes this can be rad radically different. If you're somebody who trains with no correction, and you and and this club is a is a club that uses a lot of correction or something, then that probably won't be a good fit because you guys aren't on the same page with with training styles. So uh, go there, uh, see if your training style and, and um, methods fit with the current members. Another one is: Are the people at the at the are the people at the club performing at the level you want to be? So, for instance. If you have aspirations to be uh, an inter international level trainer where you can go to international events and do well, but you're at a club where nobody is 
where they're where they're barely being able to pass club trials. It's probably not going to be a good fit. So you have to be if you want to be a national level trainer, find national level trainers to to be around. Um, this can be this is this can be tough because uh, uh, Schutzen isn't widely widely popular. So it may have to be a thing where, where you just find the nearest club and, and do what you can with seminars or um, with some of the uh, programs I'll, I'll be talking about a little bit later, um, uh, doing stuff like that to get your level up. And uh, maybe the and probably the last, maybe the most important is, do you like being around the people uh, at the club? Um, you're going to spend a ton of time uh, with people um, in, in training here. Uh, a lot of club training last quite quite a few hours so these have to be people you enjoy being around so um, if, if you don't enjoy being around it's probably not gonna be a good fit and there's probably gonna be some sort of drama um, in the future so that is qualities of a good club so I want to get into how I can help you kind of achieve your shoots and goals and get into your shoots and journey um, the first thing here, I created a, uh, um, a series of videos, about 45 minutes long, uh, the complete guide to the Schutz and BH. Uh, there's a link for it down below the chat box here. Um, and on there, uh, you can buy that video. I, I wanted to make the video, it's, it's very highly valuable information, walks you through a trial, everything you need to know about a BH, BH routine. Um, like I said earlier, the BH is kind of the prerequisite test that all dogs must pass before they go on uh, to do any of the other uh, titles. So um, in this, I wanted to, I, I created these videos to give you just a complete look at the BH routine, everything you need to know about it, the temperament tests, the microchip scans, everything. And it's very valuable information, but I wanted to make it as widely available as possible so for the, for just the videos, uh, you can pay uh, as little as a dollar for them. I'm just it's pay what you want to pay. So um, go on there um, after the webinar here, check that out because uh, that'll be your first step as far as um, moving on to the other things, getting ready for BH. So the next thing I came up with here is I'm starting an online training group. Uh, naming it Team Hit Squad, Hit as in High End Trial. Uh, this is going to be online, one-on-one -on -one coaching. I'm going to be helping you guys in all phases of the sport. Um, with it, you'll get access to a private Facebook group where you can talk with other people, other hit squatters. Um, I have unlimited email consultations about uh, what uh, – training issues, whatever, unlimited emails, shoot me as many emails as you want. They will be answered in a very timely fashion. We'll have weekly uh, Skype phone consultations that take up to half an hour. So if you want to get on Skype or you want to talk on the phone for half an hour about, uh, about your training and direction and, and methods or whatever, um, we can do that. And then also you can send me a video of your training um, and I and I will break down and analyze all the video um, and, and again that that'll be unlimited you can send me as many training videos as, as you can and I will go with you break down what can be done better what you're doing good what what could use some help um, and we will go through that um, there um, and for people who are interested in uh, becoming a uh, member of team hit squad I once wanted to share a little about my training style Number one, <clears throat> I'm not having fun if the dog's not having fun. So I that is the number one thing with me is if I want my dog to be having fun because if it's not fun for him, it's not fun for me. Um, that being said, every dog is different. I'm fluent in most every training method. Um, I've seen I've seen I've seen it all. I've seen quite a bit. Um, and, and, Originally, before I when I before I created this team hit squad, what I, I was going to do separate videos. But with each dog being different, I could I could show you a video 
where if it would work great for one dog, I can I can show I can show you a video of teaching a dog to heal. And for one dog, it would be great, but for another dog, it, it might not work at all. So with this, I I customize um, kind of the training so that it'll work with you and work with the dog. And the last thing about my training style is I'm, I emphasize emotion before behavior. Um, Anybody can teach a dog to heal. I want the dog to heal with the correct emotion. If you get the correct emotion, the behaviors will come naturally. But it, it's very important um, to get that emotion right. Um, by emotion, I mean drive states. And uh, for instance, in tracking, I want a calm, concentrated dog. But in obedience, I want a higher, kind of a higher energy, fast, um, attentive. But in in uh, protection, I want that domineering aggressive pushing behavior so each phase requires a little different emotion and i want to um train my uh, use my methods to get my dog in that right frame of mind so that being said there's limited availability on this so uh get in there and, and, and get it before the spots are taken up i only got so much time to answer questions and go through videos so uh limit availability on that if you are interested And that's all the presentation I had, guys. Um, if you could, uh, does anybody have any questions um, about uh, about anything I presented here? I will go through. Oh, uh, looks like. Sorry, guys. Like, yeah. I'm just now looking at the chat roll, getting a lot of buffering, lost your buffering. I apologize about that, guys. Um, anybody have any questions? Um, because it looks like there were so many issues, um, I, I can uh, basically take a video of this presentation and I will send it to you guys. And uh, you guys can then um, email me with any questions. Um, I apologize about the connection. Everything seems to be going fine on my end. Um, that doesn't mean I'm not doing something wrong, though. So um, I apologize for that. And I'm going to try to do these uh, presentations like once a month. So if you had problems this time, um, we'll be in the uh, uh, look look for the uh, look for a future presentation. Okay, thank you, McKenzie. Um, stopped at tracking, came back um, at the groups. All right, sorry about that, guys. Uh, Eric says, what do you do with your dog when you are not training? Uh, my dogs live a, a, a very normal life. Um, uh, they are usually in the house with me. Uh, they, they aren't currently because I tried to keep keep it as quiet as possible for the presentation here, but, uh, but they, they live a very normal life. They live in the house. Um, they're great around my family. Um, uh, they they just live a, a life. Uh, when I'm not gone, uh, I do have a kennel that they that they go into, um, so uh, they don't tear up the house or anything. But uh, other than that, they they're they're uh, calf potatoes. So, yeah. Does anybody else have any questions? What's the strangest dog breed I've seen uh, take part in shits and I wouldn't expect uh, to really be a part of the sport? The strangest dog breed was the very first club I joined. There was a standard poodle, and this poodle would bite a sleeve. There was zero aggression in the dog. It was all just through play. But, yeah, standard poodle, it, 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 was, it was a pretty funny sight to see. So it, it just shows you that our, a lot of these dogs have more – uh, potential than what you really think uh, they do. Like uh, that's the last thing I would think a poodle uh, doing shits in. But but yeah, that's that was the strangest breed. Uh, Haley asked, "What are some good simple exercises to start a future IPL puppy on at home?" Number one thing about uh, 
um, with puppies is just bond with them. Go for walks. The dog wants you want a dog that wants to be with you because you, with so much with such demanding training, uh, you it requires a very um, very deep bond with a dog. So learn learn what uh what the dog likes to play with. Um, uh, learn what you know. Just go for walks. I have a, a couple articles on the website that um, uh, talks about bonding um, through walks and stuff like that. But but yeah, just um, I always carry hot dog. Like I'll go for a walk and I'll carry hot dog with me. When the dog comes back to me and looks at me, I'll give the dog a hot dog. So the dog just is always with me and, and just doing stuff. That bond is the most important thing. It's not behaviors. Um, People are always worried about, oh, how do I teach my dog to sit? You can worry about that stuff later. We need to worry about when our puppy is just the bond and, and, and just what makes the dog tick. But good question. Anybody else, else have anything? Haley asks, um, what are some clubs you highly recommend in the Bloomington Indy area? Uh, I'm currently a member of OG Indy. Um, it's a great club. Uh, um, we meet on the south side of Indianapolis. I'm not, I don't know of any clubs in the Bloomington area, um, but uh, um, OG Indy would be a, a, a good, um, OG Indianapolis, just look that up. Um, and uh Get you a uh, we, we can get you started um eric sorry eric asks do you correct jumping and biting in puppies um no and yes like at, at a certain point puppy teeth get sharp and you got to tell them to knock it off but it, it shouldn't it, it should be more of a redirection uh i will i ever sharply correct a puppy um it it depends if the dog is uh, playing no if the dog um, some some working um, dogs can get quite rough and, and it can get serious they'll escalate into kind of a fight and it, at that point then yes they do get corrected for biting but uh, that's that's very if 99.9% of the time they're playing so I kind of re I try to redirect them and if if it gets to the point where they're just driving me nuts all uh, when they're puppies I have I have plenty of um, dog crates throughout the house. I'll just throw them in a crate or something uh, just to avoid the situation and, and let them know that using their mouth is okay, but hey, you're annoying me. Go, go in the crate. So, yeah. Good question, Eric. Does anybody else have any questions? Okay, well, um, that was the presentation I had for you guys today. Um, if you haven't, oh, okay. Uh, Haley said another one. Do you keep multiple crates for one dog around the house? When they're puppies, yeah. I, I own a two-story house, uh, so I'll have like one. I'll have like a, a crate upstairs and a crate downstairs, just because I like the dog to be with me. But when they start getting annoying, <laughs> like, you only have so much patience for puppy teeth, so. Uh, I'll just throw them in a crate for a few minutes and then, uh, and plus with, with travel and everything, we, when, when we travel to ships and clubs are in a crate, so they have to get crate trained anyway. So that's just part of the crate training process is okay. You're, you're being a bit annoying right now. Let me throw you in the crate and, and, uh, and go on. So yeah, so that's the presentation, folks. Unless you guys got any more questions, I'll I'll hang around for a minute or two here. But uh, in the meantime, uh, check out my website, highandtrial.com. Um, I also 
I, I, I publish blog articles on there quite a bit. And uh, I also have a podcast. Uh, that if you guys want to listen to that, um, it's available in the iTunes store. And it's also um, available on the website there. And, and I'm uh, putting it on YouTube as well. So um, there I interview a bunch of world champion trainers. And uh, it's pretty cool. I've gotten a good reception. Um, good reception for it. So check it out and that, that'll be some good stuff for you. McKenzie has a question. Any tips for leash reactive dog? Um, currently working on fixing my rescue pups, uh, lack of socialization. Uh, leash reactive dogs are, are, are tough, especially if they've got, um, uh, Kind of been ingrained with with that behavior um what sounds like what you're doing um distracting changing direction um it, it, it really just depends on the dog um with some dogs a correction can help and, and then reward when they do get back to you um some dogs that makes that makes the reactivity worse so uh, it, it's it's a tough situation i'd have to see the dog to tell you a for sure thing um, but uh, kind of every dog is is different. Sorry for kind of a nondescript answer there, McKenzie. <clears throat> oh. Well, folks, it was great to uh, talk to you guys. I'll hang around here for a minute or two more and see if I get any more questions. But uh, like I said, like I said before, I appreciate you guys um, <coughs> hanging with me and hanging through the uh, uh, technical difficulties. Apparently, like I said, I will send out a. Uh, I'll, I'll make this into a YouTube video and send it to you guys so you can see the parts you missed. <coughs> And you can send any uh, questions to me on um, email. And uh, that's it. Um, Eric asked, do I allow your dogs to play with your kid? Uh, my kid's only three months old right now. Um, the dog's around the kid all the time, but she doesn't do much playing at this point. Uh, kind of the plan is, uh, like I would do with any dog, is, is managed. Uh, it would be supervised. Um, so the dog wouldn't be allowed to jump on and pull ears and, and kind of any kind of good dog, um, behavior management with kids is what I plan on. But I, I, I haven't run into the situation yet. The people that, uh, I know in the sport that have kids, the kids are around and can play ball with the dog. And, um, again, that's not every dog. Um, there's some dogs that are one handler dogs, but for the most part, <clears throat> to take plates and schutzen to 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 be in the sport, the dog has to be a nice, well-rounded, well-temperamented dog. So I don't foresee any issues with my with uh, my current dog. Uh, maybe with the Malinois, there might have been. Um, he was a very high drive dog, very um, oh, I don't know the word for it. Very kind of reactive dog, but he was also very manageable in the house. So. There may or may not have been a problem with him. I, I would, I, I would definitely would have been a little more concerned with him than my current dog. But um, for now, we'll, um, the plan is just managed, um, just manage it. <clears throat> if you got any questions, just let them roll. I'm here for a few more minutes, so. Type in the chat box. Um, I'm interested. Who who of you have already attended Schutz and Clubs, and who is brand new? Um, just kind of tell me your status with Schutz and if uh, you've been to any clubs or or if you're you're brand brand new to the sport. <clears throat> Haley asked, I have a nine, 
uh, week old GSD, what's the best way to socialize them with the cats? Um, the best way is, is just kind of that management, like I said, um, and uh, and kind of make you more popular than the cats. Like for me, my dog loves me more than anything. Like the dog just associates me with with playing with um, with great stuff. So my dog, I, I'm kind of number one in his life, and 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 also um, with that, I. Um, I be, I, I'm not a big believer in pack behavior and all that stuff, but that being said, my dog knows that I'm the leader. Um, so uh, he does kind of take his direction from me. So just kind of that <clears throat> everyday dog training stuff that um, it, it's no different for a shits and dog. It really isn't. People want to make all these big differences. A dog's a dog's a dog. And uh, um, just treat it like you would any other dog. So McKenzie is completely brand new. Yeah, one of the Huskies. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, Huskies um, can work. I've <clears throat> I've actually heard of a Husky. I've never actually seen one, but, but yeah, that'd be great. Uh, Liz, amateur here. Never been to any club. Yeah, it's um, – Liz, I, I – I was really happy that I got involved. It, it really, I didn't ever anticipate that uh, dog training would be a thing for me. Um, I, like I said, I got my first dog I had at six months old and I just wanted to go out and kind of show her obedience and I got the bug. So yeah, that's go out, visit some clubs and, and same thing might happen with you. Uh, Haley's totally brand new. Uh, got lessons going. That's great. And Eric, <coughs> been to OG Indy twice. I've probably seen you then. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's great. Well, cool, guys. Um, um, I look forward and uh, uh, keep in touch with all of you. Like I said, I will send out a, a video copy of uh, the presentation here. And uh, um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to to email me high in trial 14 at gmail.com and uh, um, look forward to working with you guys. So um, if we don't have any more questions. I will get out of here. Thank you guys for attending. Bye.